السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله خيال الصلاة خيال الصلاة خيال الفلاة خيال الفلاة الله أكبر الله وأكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا إن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في كتابه العزيز المحكم إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء My dear respectful brothers and sisters Today the topic of this Friday sermon is about how to prevent yourself from falling into shirk, how to avoid making or saying or thinking about something which is uh, causing that you make partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk is polytheism, means to have multiple gods. If you have many gods, then you are like a slave owned by many, many masters. So that slave <coughs> is in such a confusion where he or she receives order from this one and this one says opposite order. So you are not stable and you, aside of being a slave, you are in another trouble. This one also is besides getting into sins and going to hellfire. Other than that, you are in this world, you live in trauma, you live in complexity, you live in all kinds of problems. So you live with trouble because you are owned by many, many gods. And you don't know who you should bless at this moment and who you should bless next moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
have mentioned that in many, many verses in the Quran. Therefore, the point is that we Muslims, we should always stay away from anything that may lead us to shirk. Therefore, we have to protect ourselves from the shirk and prevent the shirk to attack us. The shirk attacks you from all corners, left and right, top and down, behind and front, anywhere, any direction, which means whatever you are saying, whatever you are doing, you must make sure this is free from shirk. When ibadah is pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you get the fruits of that ibadah. You are first in it, in this world and hereafter. But when it has a kind of mixing, you are mixing uh, shirk within it, it doesn't matter how long it took to you, it doesn't matter how much effort you put, in, you invested in it, but still, you've got nothing if you do not get sin from that doing of uh, what you think is Ibadah, but it, because it has shirki, it becomes the opposite of Ibadah. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran many verses, and I'm just quoting one, a few of them. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ Allah says, yet, of the people, there are some who take themselves, they take to themselves objects of worshipping. Because of that, they love them with a love which is like that, or uh, which is due to Allah only. If you love somebody just like the way you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person, you are associating the worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that person. If you love that person more, more than Allah, then that is the person you worship. To generalize first, let us pick up four points, four doors, where shirk always enters our hearts. When shirk is entering our hearts, it uses four doors. So those four doors, which are the sources of polytheism, means having multiple goddess, one of them is that is because of the love. You love somebody, and then your love is extreme. It's too much. Until that person says to you, I will not happy with you if you pray. Then you say, okay, because I want to please that person, then I don't have to pray. So then, that is, it's more than a shirk. If you, for example, because you love that person, and you are with them, you cannot leave them, and then you miss the prayer, because you were a beloved, with a beloved person. That means a shirk. And you prefer the person other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also out of respect. Somebody that you think this person is like your grandfather and you respect him so much. And because of that respect, you did some kinds of worship for that person. Like for example, you did sujood for that person. You, you do not only bow down, but you prostrate it for that person. That means you worship that person. You are respecting, but your respect should have a limit. So love should have limit, and respect should have a limit. The, again, the obedience. You obey somebody, even say your spouse. Your response, you obeyed her or obeyed him so much until they they relicted you from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means you're obeying 
is out of the limit. Everything should be should have a limit. And for example, obeying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you obey the Prophet. He is the Prophet, and you should obey him. But your obeying and your praising and your respect and your love to him should have a limit. It should never reach at the limit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if you think that you are now sick and Prophet Muhammad can heal you, you are in shirk. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only a messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to convey this message. And that's what he did. That's it. All you do is just to make salih for him, dua, and respect him, that's all. But it should be at the limit of mankind. Not that he is not superhuman. He was only a human being. So you should know the difference between Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi as well as other prophets. And you should know the limit between Allah and the angels. You should know the difference between Allah and what we can call awliya, the people who are high level of ulama, the high spiritual leaders. The high spiritual leaders that you can call sheikhs, you don't know who is closer to Allah, you or them. Even if you if you make 10 times sin every day, and this is the sheikh who is always in the masjid, because you didn't check their deep heart, so you don't know. You should always believe that this is only a human being like you. He's not more than that. Again, Allah, in that case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, These people, they made their bishops, sheikhs, spiritual leaders, they made like lords aside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Masih, Jesus alayhi salam, the son of Mary, they made him like a lord beside Allah or equal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and because of that, that's why they got lost. So it's not only when we hear those verses we think the old Christians or old and uh, Arab magicians and so on. We have to always put our actions, uh, make it reflective to the Quran. We have to always think about our own situation, not the old, the previous generations and not the future generation. Because Quran is addressing to the generation at that moment. That is one. So I, when this verse was revealed, the companions asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said, "We didn't worship our uh, rohbans and uh, the, our bishops and fathers." Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to them, "Wait a minute! Didn't you? They say to you, this is halal." and you just accept it heedlessly, without even looking at the, at the book. And they said to you, this is haram, and you completely, you have accepted that. And they were making whatever they want haram, forbidden, and what they wanted, they were making it permissible. And you were following them. He said, yes. Then this, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that is the ibadah, that's how you worship them. So again, the other point, where mostly Muslims fall into trouble because of it is the fear. Many Muslims, they fear from something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see people fearing jinn, people fearing from something which is an, an, an unseen. You cannot see them and you think they will affect you, so you fear from like um, something which is flying around and it will enter to you and will harm you. 
If that is, it is, if it's just like that symbol, then where is the God's responsibility? Allah has His own. He's created us, and He made Himself and um, responsible to manage our health, our wealth, our, all that. And so you cannot fear from something other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and think that this thing will give you a disease or will make you crazy, or will heal you. And again, because of the same thing when you have like tradition, you say this thing, our grand-grandfathers used to respect this and do such and such things and so, and we are doing the same thing. Are you telling me your father and your grandfather were doing wrong? That's when, what many people uh, make their argument, they say, okay, I cannot disobey my parents, my tradition, my people used to do this and this. So remember, your grandfather and your father were only human beings. They could make mistakes, they could make something wrong, they could make correct, they could do anything is possible. And you are the same like them. And then, if they were doing wrong, you, you are not ashamed because your parents did something wrong. You are a different person. And your account is in front, in front of Allah, you will be accounted differently. Therefore, I will urge dear brothers and sisters, let us avoid shirk, which is coming through love, through respect, through obedience, through fear, through um, expectation that you expect this thing to give you wealth or to heal you or through tradition and make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and he is the one who can give you something and can harm you Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we are all our ibadahs are free from shirk. Because imagine, you are taking uh, time from your work, from your other interesting things, coming to the masjid, or devoting yourself to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in your house or anywhere else. You are investing the time and maybe money, and you are concentrating all those, you are even using your mind, your brain, your effort, all your energy, but then it, it becomes null and void. Only one thing, just because maybe when you were begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you said one word, simply like that. You said, like usually, if you, are, if you listen to church, they usually say, okay, uh, Lord, we ask you this, 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 we ask you prayer, we ask you this, and we ask you all that in the name of Jesus. So they were all good, but just in the name of Jesus. Why don't they directly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Only that, they got all their prayers null and void. And Muslims, they do such, uh, such thing, they say, I ask such and such things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. The Prophet cannot help you now. He only gave you the message and that's it. And it's your responsibility to learn Islam and practice it. And make sure your begging Allah is pure to Allah. Your prayer is pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the initial part. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الدعاو مخ العبادة The begging is the brain of worshipping. If you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the brain of the worshipping and the mind and the heart of worshipping is the dua that you are making. So firstly, purify your dua and then trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are in problem, if you are in pain, it's only Allah who can give you help and relief out that out of you. Therefore, Make sure you are free from that shirk. And then trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not become like a 
those um, the old mushrikeen. One time when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was with them, they were in in a war, in engagement of war, and then they said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Is Allah that awadi? Prophet, why don't you make for us a tree where we hold our swords on it and put our legs there when we are fighting? Because they have a tree like that, and because of that tree, the tree." That three gives kind of praka means uh, good things. So that we should have like a three like that, so that we can defeat them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, getting so angry, said to them, "This is exactly what the old uh, Israel people when they were in the war with the Fir'aun, they said, and Allah mentioned that in the Quran." Where Allah said, they said, it's Allahna ilaha kama Allahum aliha. Oh, Moses, they said, make for us a God. So, because they have also many gods. So, and Allah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, already told them they have one God, and that's the God who sent. That is Allah. And they were expecting to get something else to worship so that they can defeat their enemy. Therefore, we have to make sure that all, all what we are doing today must be pure from self. And we should not think like saying the old people were, those of ancient people were really foolish. How come they were worshiping idols, things that they made like toys and so? How they were worshiping stone that they made it with their hands. They were not fool, foolish. They were just acting like the way you today we act, most of us act. They think they were thinking they were worshiping Allah. But because they have they were they believe they have so many sins, so they cannot face uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, so they have to go through someone to take them to Allah. That's that was their aim. They knew that the statues they made. It's not the God who created them and fed them, but it was somebody that they used to respect. It. And they had the belief that this person was very close to Allah. So if you ask this person something, this person will make recommendation and talk to Allah, and then Allah will give you that thing. That's how they used to worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in the Quran, where Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَا They were saying, well, we are not, those who met God beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were always making this argument to say, we are not worshipping them. We, are only, we only want them to take us close to Allah. That is what we aim, but we, we don't aim, we are worshipping. Who said we are worshipping this the grandfathers? Who said we are worshipping the old sheikhs? No, we are not worshipping them, but because they are close to Allah, then they were taking us close to Allah. And that's wrong. And they were saying, Those are the ones who will make interceding for us between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah says, and Allah, he, he owns all kinds of interceding, so no one comes to Allah and makes recommendation. Because Allah already knows you, and so you have to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all ways directly. It doesn't matter whether you didn't break this morning, it doesn't matter whether you have killed somebody even or not, that is big sin, but still you have the opportunity to be heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can submit yourself to Allah and turn to Allah and beg Him directly. Allah says in the Quran, and beg your Lord in a humble way and way which is low you in your heart, from deep heart, you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my dear respectful brothers and sisters, I still I urge yourself and myself that we should be careful 
in all our dailies, especially when it comes to uh, things that can lead us to uh, worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that nobody can harm you with magic and no jinn can enter you. And so don't fear of any, any of those things. Just fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your love should be limited, your respect should be limited. So you have to know the difference between Allah and human being. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. So Allah has created everything other than himself. So then you should know that they are just like you and you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بذات الله يوصيكم بالتقوى الله عز وجل وأحذركم بنفسي ونفسكم بمخالفة الله وإحسانه وأذكركم بأمر بدأ الله بنا وبدأ الله بنفسه ثم أمر بملائكته ثم أمرنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما so we next are to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam make that sally Allah make sally to Prophet and he ordered the angels and he ordered us that's only and you can make sally to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam while you are silent from in your mind in your deep heart not necessarily you shout and then that is compulsory in the Quran but then let's know the difference between Allah subhanahu wa taala and Prophet uh, Sa fa